beneath the grey skies lies a concrete jungle with a veil of deception that covers the long roads and winding paths of everyday life. In recent times, we have uncovered some traders playing a dangerous game of selling dodgy meats. People want to make quick money. In the long term, we're going to affect the health of our citizens. Uh, yeah. But there is another dance between money and greed, tuning the health of the innocent and somehow forcing them to make small steps against sickening odds. It's a complex scenario which is associated with a lot of issues. Tonight, my investigation lifts the dark veil in the meat industry and tricks used by butchers in a world so corrupt and broken because of toxic selfish interests. The meat industry in the country has thrived for decades. Different cuts, different prices for different recipes. There is a high demand for meat products in the country. Mutton, chicken and pork, but beef tops the list. Injecting chemicals into meat to prolong shelf life is not an uncommon practice in the country and other parts of the world. It's an old practice. A source demonstrated to us how some poultry distributors and retailers inject chicken with water mixed with this animal protein mainly pork and beef or protein powder. The solution is mixed together to help the protein hold the water once injected into the chicken. The solution is forced into the muscles of a chicken and sometimes binding agents in the solution are used to prevent the water from leaching out of the chicken or meat during cooking. Before you dig into your favorite dish, a supermarket insider tells us a dirty little secret. So, Yes. Our insider, who works for one of the leading supermarkets, took us to the industrial area in Nairobi, where they buy the chemical. He has worked as a butcher in several branches of the supermarket in Nairobi. Not anyone can buy the chemical here. They have a street name for it and it's purchased at a particular hour of the day. He pays and lives with four kilos of the chemical. The chemical we bought is called sodium metabisulfite and the street name is Dawayanyama or SMS. 
It is a white powder used as a disinfectant, antioxidant and a preservative agent. The issue of uh, use of chemicals by butchers and by traders within the meat value chain is not a new thing. The only thing that happens is that of late the issues have been on the rise. Mimi kama mteja nikikuja kununua nyama nikiona pale kwa display mtajua hii nyama imekuwa chemical ama ijawekwa ama mtajuaje hii iko na chemical. Hauwezi jua sababu hata tukifanya unafanya huko nyuma aidha kwa cold room pale nyuma yani mteja hiyo ni lazima yani isiaje julikana. Eh so ile kuna kitu mefiti ni kitu yani. So after kuchanganya sasa ndio nyama umebeba wewe mtasaka kwa display. Lakini sasa tumechanganya hapo mbele ya mteja hivi ama mali watu wanakuona. Hiyo chemical inafaa kwa kwenye nyama kwa muda gani? Mali ni biashara. Wapo nyama itakaanza kama ni siku tatu ama siku tano. I expect to see that nyama imeoza ama imeharibika. Our insider told us diced beef and minced meat are the easiest to lace with the chemical and trendy especially for mothers who choose to win their babies. Sana sana pale butchery unapata kuna wa mama ambao wako na watoto wachanga hivi sasa anataka kuanza kunyonya ameachana kwa kinyonyesha sasa anataka kuanza kufundisha yule mtoto chakula ile solid food yani mara nyingi wale wa mama kama 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 chukui fillet ya samaki alikuwa anakuambia kama si tu yapi fillet anakuambia na kuja kwa mistmeat so pale sasa unapata yani ile utu yani ndani yangu pia naona yani yule mtoto mchanga labda kuna mwaka mmoja hivi miezi ama mwaka mmoja na miezi hivi na naona mtoto hii ni kitu tapewa labda kwa baada ya siku mbili mbili hivi na ule mtoto bado naona ni leku kunenepa so inakuwa yani unaona hata ule mtoto yani labda hata atapata madhara juu ya ya chemical eh juu ya chemical na si vizuri whatever the mother takes in that is what the baby is receiving and in the long term probably this child might have some health problems i'm not sure but what if they developed asthma what if they started getting that wheezing and coughing or got into shock you know nobody is going to think that it's because of the meat that this baby was eating so we bought the chemical he was talking about and this is one kilo of sodium metabisulfite this is what they use to redden the meat and to make it look fresh so we have a kilo of meat here and what we want to do we want to put the solution in one of the bowls and see how this um, goes so we'll have the fresh meat here and it's going to mix it up and show us how they actually do it at the supermarket <laughs> ndio unapata pale sasa ile wakati asubuhi ndio nyama tunaweza kuzipanga kwenye display e, kama kuna nyama ambazo zilikuwa za jana yake na zikuisha tunaziri package wakati asubuhi na hiyo wakati asubuhi sana sana sasa ndio unapata ile kimikali kabla wale watu pale supermarket kuanze kuona wateja ndio watu tunachanganya na nyama so mnafanyaje so vitu tunafanya ni unachukua bakuli unaweka maji kulingana na kitu kama kibakuli hivi linaweka ukiseka maji unachukua sasa ile kimikali e, kimikali nayo unaweka kulingana na nyama kama ni nyama unataka kuweka kama nyama ni kilo sita ama kilo tano kulingana nani ni ukubwa yani ni quantity ya nyama ndio unachanganya sababu ukika zaidi ya sana ukika mingi zaidi ile kimikali inachoma ile nyama unapata ile nyama inaanza kuwa kama nyeusi nyeusi hivi na ikiwa nyeusi wale wateja wataweza kufanya nini? Wataweza kuinua. So lazima uchanganye ile kemikali upate ile ingiana na your balance. Yeah, your balance. So the main aim ya kuiweka ni the main aim ni kutan color. The main aim ya kuweka uchungi ni kwanza kabisa ni ya kusaidia ile nyama hata kama itakaa pale siku mbili tatu iweze kubakikiwa nini? Fresh. Eh lakini pia zaidi ya hiyo hii kemikali pia inaweza kusaidia ile nyama iweze kuwa more clean ni rangi yake ibaki vile vile na yeye kwa fresh yani na pia zaidi hiyo unapata ile nyama pia hii inatoa pia roof chemical pia inatoa unapata ina mnuko hivi eh haitanukia ni kama inaoza yani na mbona umevaa gloves hii chemical inadhurupia mikono aswa kama uko na mali umekatwa hivi 
eh na kwa nishida so tulikuwa tuna sisitizo sana lazima usishike usikuje into contact nayo na wakati huo mna changanya kemikali kwa nyama mm-hmm. wale wafanyakazi wengine pale supermarket wanajua wa, ni nini wamnafanya pale karibu wafanyakazi wote ambao wanawashafanya kazi supermarket ama wanafanya wana wanaweza kuelezea wanajua na ukipima unapima tu kwa macho unapima tu kwa macho ni kitu ambacho ukikaa pale hivi utaweza kujua tu pole pole tu yani utaweza kufundishwa na wenzako pale uweze kuelezewa hii inatosha hii kiwango utaweza tu kutumia macho tu yani kujua eh yeah. so unichanganya na maji hadi pale ina ina dissolve ndani eh yeah. section dissolve kuna kuja sasa una unaimwagia sasa kwa ile nyama hivi kiwango kama hiyo kwa mwagia hivi juu yake una sasa una kujua una unaichanganya kujua ni unaichanganya changanya unaichanganya but hii nyama ikiwa kwa hii bakuli hivi hii nyama inaweza kupatia garantia kwamba inaweza kaa hapa hivi kesho kisho kutwa bado itakuwa hivi na hata itaendelea labda kuwa ta zaidi ya vile unaiona sasa hivi so wakati mmemaliza hivi sasa ndio mnaweka kwa zile matre kubwa kubwa zile za pale kwa display ndio mna present sasa pale mbele how bad is the situation now the situation we might not be able to authoritatively say quantify but if you listen to the main, uh, the, the few traders i have been able to speak to they tell you this is something we talk this is something we do but do not mention us because we have to survive we took the two bowls of meat which our insider had prepared on a tuesday afternoon and this is what the meat looked like 5 days later our insider was spot on the fast bowl with the chemical had a bright red color looked better juicier and fresh after 5 days without any refrigeration there was no smell the second bowl without the chemical had a brown yellowish slime coating on the meat which had changed color with an overwhelming stench filling the air and the public also needs to be aware they need to look at the meat if it's so colorful it looks like it's almost from a story book i mean this is not real they need to avoid this kind of meat meat naturally should attract flies if it's in a rural area say but if it doesn't it means something is just not right for it to be a good preservative for the raw meat you need to have very high you know very high amounts of it for it to have an effect yeah the small amounts that we which are which are recommended will not have an effect on its preservative with the preservation of the red meat our insider father told us there was another dirty secret so mkingi asubuhi wale watu ambao wanafungwa kazi asubuhi pale kitu ya kwanza mnapoingia kazi kabla ile milango ya supermarket ifunguliwe wateja waanze kuingia kitu ya kwanza kabisa ni kuchukua zile nyama ambazo zilikuwa kwa display ambazo zilikuwa zimezilikuwa gazi mfuni kwa hivi wanachukua sasa wanafanya nini wanatoa hizi wanatoa hizi mara hizi label ni packaging yake ya jana na hata kama hizi sahani yake ile kama ile kuisha pata pata ile ile damu damu hivi stain stain ile inabidi pia unatoa ile bakuli uneka kwa sahani nyingine tena alafu una tena unakuja una rap tena vingine una Canada rap na another label ambayo itakuwa na date ya kuonyesha the current date many butchers using this shortcut fear losing customers in the long run but ride on the ignorance of many unsuspecting buyers i sought to find out from our insider what happens to the meat laced with the sodium metabisulfite if no one buys it after a couple of days pale kwa supermarket bado kuna section ya jikoni kuna bakery kuna section kadha za chakula na kuna fresh so hii ni mambo kika sana tuko bado tunaweza kujua wale ni wenzetu ni colleagues na nyama yote ni wanatumia pale sisi ndio tunawa supply sisi ndio tunawapatia so badala tu wapate nyama yenye kwa fresh kabisa tuna tuna opto tu wapatie hii ambayo imekaka sababu wao kupika unapata kuna beef stew kuna sengine wanapika pilau e, chakula kadhalika tu yani for most of us picking good quality meat is a shot in the dark this is 1 kilo of sodium metabisulfite 
and our insider tells us back at the butchery section of the supermarket it was enough for five kilos of meat. What does this chemical sodium metabisulfite do to the body once it's ingested? The problem comes in when you have where you don't know how this compound is being used as a preservative and the amounts. That's where the problem comes in. Okay. Now, what do you talk about the amounts? If the amounts are uh, excessive, one of the things that uh, this compound has been thought to cause is uh, the increase of incidence of uh, respiratory uh, allergies. So some people have asthma, will have now increased incidence of uh, asthma. It basically makes them have more frequent attacks. People who are sensitive to sulfite, be it in medicine or wherever, if they take that kind of meat, they're going to get some reactions. One of the things that will happen if you take this uh, chemical is you'll notice they have a lot of wheezing, they may start coughing with no explanation. Like you've not been exposed to anything, you've not been having a call, but you start coughing. That's if it is taken in high quantities. And uh, for pregnant women, if they're sensitive to sulfite and they take this kind of meat, then what happens? They'll experience all these symptoms and the flow of oxygen to the baby where the placenta is going to be affected. So that could be a danger for the unborn baby. We took the chemical to a clinical technologist to help us answer a few questions. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. So I've brought the chemical okay. for testing. Oh, this is the one we talked about. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. What yes. is this chemical, sodium metabisulfite? Mm. The chemical sodium metabisulfite, as you can uh, actually, we have it here. <clears throat> Let me want to show you what the chemical is. And this is the same? Yeah, they are the same. Okay. They are the same as the one you have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only that... Uh, Explain, why are you wearing gloves? Because uh, the gentleman yes. who was mixing this chemical with the meat yes. was also wearing gloves. Oh. Why do you wear gloves here in the lab? Okay, the reason why we wear gloves in the lab, uh, the chemical like this one is corrosive. Eh? It can cause a skin irritation. So for me to protect myself, I have to be in my protective gear. This chemical uh, actually is the chemical we use for uh, doing some investigations in uh, clinical hematology. And as you can see, the chemical is in powder form. Look at the, what, what you have brought here. I can open it, eh? Yes, you can. Okay. Look at it. It is in powder form. It is also in powder form. Eh? You can see. The, it's actually the same. They are the same. The chemical from the name sodium metabisulfite, it is actually a, a combination of sodium and sulfites. And uh, clinically, we use it uh, in the diagnosis of sickle cell anemia. And, uh, it can also be used in the food industry. Yeah, maybe as a preservative. Health concerns associated with excessive use of this chemical as a food preservative for consumers sensitive to sulfites forced the US Food and Drug Administration FDA to prohibit the use of sodium bisulfite in meats, vitamin B1 food sources, and raw fruit cuts and vegetables such as in salad bars of fresh produce in supermarkets. That was July 8, 1986. The FDA, which is responsible for assuring that foods sold in the U.S. are safe, wholesome and properly labeled, took another significant step that day towards protecting consumers and ordered disclosure labeling requirement for packaged foods containing detectable levels of sulfites. The FDA regulation based their findings on a government study of some 500 reports of severe allergic reactions, mainly among asthmatics, including 13 deaths. In the food industry, like those people who are, practice, who are practicing that, the, the problem is they might not be using the right concentration. 
And uh, why am I preparing 2% uh, of sodium metabisulfite? So that I don't prepare an increased concentration that is going to affect the cells. Eh? I, what, I have said that if I suspend these cells in a highly concentrated solution, then cells are going to lose water, okay? Generally, they lose water and they become now cremated, okay? So it means, when, what happens when you take out of the salt? You feel dehydrated. Yeah, you feel dehydrated because it now takes away water from the body. From the body. Asthmatic people, seeing the symptoms that come about even in healthy individuals, like wheezing and coughing, they are more exposed and more at risk. And some studies have shown that 5 to 10% of all asthmatics are sensitive to sulfite. That means it can be a danger and uh, people using this product should not do so because they are endangering the lives of some of the consumers. What are the long-term effects of this chemical in a human body? One of the things that this compound does, once you've ingested it, it is a compound that is, the body is able to break down. But when you break down, there's one of the compounds that they produce, that's the sulfite. The sulfite is also thought to cause, uh, break other compounds. For example, one of the compounds they break is uh, what you call benzoic acid. Uh, that benzoic acid can, is thought to be carcinogenic. In layman's terms, that means that means it can cause cancer. Sodium bisulfite works by releasing sulfur dioxide gas, which inhibits bacterial and fungal growth and prevents the discoloration and deterioration caused by common chemical reactions. Using the chemical as a preservative on fresh meat, by international standards, is illegal. Some people even medically reacts to some compounds and you will consume uh, thinking that it is uh, organic meat which has no chemicals in it and when you consume you start reacting and that's why you hear some people saying I have allergies to meat to beef it is not the beef it is the component within that beef some have drug residues others have those preservatives residues and now they react and some people you realize they now put an X to consuming beef well, actually, it is not the beef that they are reacting to. They are reacting to the components and residues that are in that piece of meat. Unfortunately, in Kenya, there is no public case study on this chemical, no reported investigation into its use and effects in restaurants, supermarkets, and retailers. The FDA was under pressure from the U.S. Congress after a hearing that featured an emotional testimony by the parents of a 10-year-old girl who died after eating guacamole in a restaurant. The death of Medaya Hesper McPike, who was asthmatic, was the seventh suspected case from a sulfite reaction, according to her doctors, who listed cause of death as brain damage caused by oxygen deprivation following anaphylactic shock, an allergic reaction. The discovery widely covered in the U.S. press prompted the State Health Department to issue emergency regulation on the use of sulfites in food. The Mexican restaurant was sued by parents of the 10-year-old girl and two food distribution companies. The judge presiding over the 1988 case stated, and I quote, the 10-year-old girl became seriously ill shortly after eating the guacamole at the defendant restaurant. The judge father said the restaurant was negligent and the product was unreasonably dangerous because it did not contain warnings on the package to alert the restaurant personnel that some asthmatic persons are highly sensitive to sulfites and that sulfites may be dangerous if used in excessive amounts or concentrations. Our investigations led us to the final phase of verifying claims of the presence of sodium metabisulfite in fresh meat from some supermarkets, 
falsely advertised on displays as fresh meat. So I've brought these three samples and these are from three different supermarkets. What exactly are you going to do with these three samples here in the lab? Okay, first of all, what I'm going to do is to measure the weight of these samples. Each of them, I should get the weight. And then I use a method called Monius Williams method two. Monius what? Monius. Monius. Yeah, Williams. Okay. Eh? okay. Method to process all these three samples. That's like a formula. It's like a formula or a method rather, okay. whereby now it's the one that is being used mostly and is the easiest one to use so that we get the, the content of the, the sodium metabisulfite in each of these samples if there is. How any. long do you think this will take? This now will take us one week okay. if uh, we start it right away. Okay. We bought three meat samples from three different supermarkets in Nairobi labeled sample one, sample two, and sample three. We didn't disclose to the lab which supermarkets they came from. This product is also used by pharma agencies. Those are pharmaceutical agencies. Um, it's also used by textile industries, clothing and textile, whereby they bleach the clothes with it. In such a case, people who are sensitive tend to get that skin contact reaction. They may start getting itchy, they may develop hives or some kind of rashes, but after several washes, you find that they go back to normal. And you see, if one is not aware of this chemical, they'll not even relate the symptoms they experienced prior to all those washes to sodium metabosulfite. As we waited for the results, Another dirty secret that is slowly making its way into our plates is that juicy steak. Unfortunately, some cuts in restaurant kitchens are being held together using meat glue to give the impression you are eating a premium steak. It's another white powdery substance known as transglutaminase or meat glue. The powder binds proteins together where they collect pieces of meat as this YouTube video shows. The process of making a fake steak is easy by sprinkling the meat glue on the chunks of meat, tossing them around and wrapping tightly to suck out the air before letting it rest and then slicing as a normal steak. You know it is very solid but you just mix and spray and the meat turns as you watch. It shocks me and it also depresses me. Because in the long term, we're going to affect the health of our citizens. Our health systems are also going to be overstrained. And a lot of money is going to go into health care, as opposed to other development projects. The FDA says it's safe, but the problem is how it's being used or abused. The quantity of glue getting into the meat and the issue of stacking up chunks of good meat with the ones having bacteria. Back to our lab test. On the three meat samples we bought from three different supermarket chains and Dr. Martha Mwangi had the results for us. Did you find any trace of sodium metabisulfite on the three samples we brought here? Well, in the three samples that we obtained, there were traces of uh, sodium metabisulfite in all the three samples. In the sample one, we got uh, 550.4 milligrams per kg. Sample two had 547.2 milligrams per kg. In sample 3, had 545.4 milligrams per kg. What does that mean? Uh, that means the amount is uh, above the recommended uh, amount in food products as a preservative. The test report shows the weight in grams for each sample we bought and the results indicate sample 1 at 17.2 grams had 550.4 milligrams of sodium metabisulfite. Sample 2 at 17.1 grams at 547.2 milligrams of the chemical and the last sample at 17.4 grams contained 545.4 milligrams of the sodium metabisulfite per kilogram of the meat we bought from the three supermarkets. Did this result shock you? In a way it shocked me, but I was aware that sodium metabisulfite has been used, um, is being used in meat products. But I was, not, um, I was not aware of the amounts that are being used, yes. 
these amounts are higher than these what are, you thought? These amounts are higher, much higher than what I thought. At what point, in terms of levels, mm. are we then saying this is now dangerous? Mm. Mm. Um, going with your results. Going by these results, anything above 500 um, has side effects. And then you can also think about the people who are handling these meats. Of course, they, they handle more than the 500 because this is in one sample. What's your conclusion in this report? My conclusion is that uh, the levels we are having in our meat products, one, we are not supposed to have the sodium metabolic sulfate in our meat products because the other thing is that it inhibits our thiamine, vitamin B1 in, in meat products. So uh, we, should, we shouldn't be having these levels. Do the levels of the chemicals change? Are they any lower? when it goes through the cooking process? No, the levels of sodium metabisulfide do not change with boiling or with cooking. It can only um, be more concentrated because the meat, it will, the, the, the water will evaporate, so you'll have a more concentrated amount. Are you aware that some supermarkets under your association are putting chemicals in meat? No, we are not aware. In fact, I think it first came to light when you started the build-up to your article. It is not something we are aware that is happening internally, especially within the membership that we represent. Uh, there has been news about chemicals in vegetables, but the story on meat is a new one. We are talking to our members to ensure that they have their numbers right, that we sell five kilos a day so you don't buy ten. That way the opportunity or the temptation to do something to keep that meat longer does not arise. Food standards agencies in some countries in Europe require retailers to label all food with the sodium metabisulfite in concentrations of over 10 milligrams per kilogram. Our test results show the levels are 55 times over those levels and there are no disclosure labels. There is another problem. And by the way, uh, sodium metabisulfate is not only used on meat products. Um, there are people who are using it on chips. There are people who are using it on fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Like when they you find put the chemical on the chips? They put the chemical on the chips either before or after frying. To achieve what result? Well, I think they are tastier with the sodium metabisulfite. Oh, really? Yes. They're also using it on fresh fruits to preserve it. As I said, sodium metabisulfite inhibits growth of microbials. Those are the bacteria and the fungi. So they can use it to prolong their shelf life. Unfortunately, these are the amounts that we cannot, uh, we are not able to measure. So we don't know how much met sodium metabisulfite that is being used or how it's regulated. Is it difficult to regulate the food industry in Kenya? I think uh, the regulations are there, but it's an uphill task to monitor and follow up so as to ensure that everything is done. It's really an uphill task because you find that almost anybody can sell food. The use of uh, calcium carbide is prohibited. But you see there are people who want to make money. Yeah? What do, what do they do? They can go for it so that they, they, they can quicken the ripening of their fruits and that they make cash. And that is now a problem we have in Kenya. Because uh, if, this is, if the trend is going to continue like that, uh, you can explain the cases of, uh, of high cancer cases in Kenya uh, that is emanating from maybe the lifestyle. Go and look at uh, bananas. Which, uh, which have been uh, assisted to ripen, in quotes. Eh? They look, the skin usually looks yellow, but the stalk, the stalk's usually green, okay? A natural, natural process of ripening, everything, the, the, the stalk usually it is, it becomes black, and the skin of the fruit eh, becomes yellowish with black spots. But where chemicals are used for ripening, you find that there's no spot. In fact, they use it so that they can move the, sp the spots and they, they can attract now people. Yeah, this is good. It is clear some butchers and some supermarkets are using unregulated amounts of the chemical or preservative. The health dangers they are exposing to the health of both the children and adults is worrying. There's been an increased incidence of cancers, especially in children. 
of course, people will argue that maybe diagnosis has improved, uh, access to healthcare has improved, but also I think there's actual uh, there's an actual increase of cancers. Yeah, it could be because of lifestyle, lifestyle uh, changes, but some of these chemicals now that are available. The chemicals, artificial foods, artificial uh, chemicals, things you have, uh, the, the sodium by sulfites, all those are also being now more in the market. They are more available, they are being used by the, the industries, and we are all prone to it because all of us are eating from the supermarkets. We are all eating from these uh, manufactured foods. We are not going, we are not eating the food that we used to eat in the village. You talked about the leukemia cases that are on the rise. Mm -hmm. Have you identified specific areas where you've mm -hmm. seen a big number yes. of these cases? One of my students is actually doing, a, we are doing what we call a prevalence uh, uh, study on the children who come to Kenyatta Hospital, let me be specifically. Yeah? And we have identified two places at the moment, three places actually. One of them within Nairobi, Nairobi environs. Uh, the other one is the Nyanza region. The other one is uh, the eastern region Meru, around Meru, Embu region. Eh? So the areas where we've seen like an increase in incidence of these uh, cancers, we don't know exactly why from those three. Yeah, the assumption is maybe better health access, but also changing lifestyle, especially in Nairobi. A lot of these lifestyle diseases that we are facing in, as Kenyans could be attributed to uh, some of these chemicals that, we, that are in food and we're actually not even aware and we're not at a level where we've done studies to either rule out or rule in the effect on our health. So things like hypertension, um, um, kidney damage, all result from uh, some of these chemicals that we're exposed to. Undeclared and unregulated preservatives in meat is not a closely guarded secret anymore. Many retailers value sulfites above other preservatives because they do more than return spoilage. They keep food looking fresh even when it's not. Since this is happening, what are you going to do about it? Within the last one year, there's been a lot of conversation within the retail sector in regard to food safety. But that discussion has been centered mainly on uh, vegetables and fruits, not on meat. Uh, when you first did the promo for your article, we have had in discussions inside within ourselves trying to figure out does this happen within our particular sector or is it happening within uh, generally people who deal with meat. Once a chemical is allowed to be used, say as a preservative, it's allowed by a legislation, eh? then it means it is controlled. You cannot use it uh, beyond a controlled uh, concentration. And it means there are uh, instructions on how to prepare uh, the chemical for use. The critical thing is for the industry to reinstill confidence and trust from consumers on the products they sell. And for consumers, there is need to make informed choices. This is a red alert before Kenyans become the ultimate guinea pigs. Dennis Okari, NTV Investigates.